Hey, good evening, Con Carolinas TV. Hi, My name is Chris Bronner, and that is April Baker. And we are here to present the new reimagined Con Carolinas television. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to April, who's going to tell you a little bit about herself. Okay. Um, I'm April. I am one of the content creators here at Con Carolinas. And um, this is my first year as a working member of the con, although I've been attending the con since I've moved here um, in 2017 to North Carolina. Um, as someone new to the state, I found the con as I was looking for a place to call home um, because I, you know, new to the state, you need people to find. And um, the con just, it, it just felt like they're just, they just was a diverse community full of fascinating people and um it just it just seemed like a great place and i just felt like i belonged from the get-go and it just i just i knew i had to be a part of it yeah um, as as a kid who grew up in the 80s i was just i was destined to be a geek uh yeah you know, <laughs> we had we had the the it best intellectual property came out of the 80s personally think uh, you know we had video games we had tv shows we had the saturday morning cartoons we had some of the best toys ever. Uh, you know, <laughs> Transformers. And growing up, and, and my mother was a lot loved sci-fi, and um, she had a, a great. She grew up with a lot of great British television, which was which was interesting. And she passed that all down to me. So I just I was destined to be a geek from from birth, and um, I can't wait to share all the love that I have and the passion that I have from some of the stuff with the rest of you guys. Chris? All right. Sweet. Um, well, um, my name is Chris, but uh, a lot of people would just call me Bronner because it's my last name. And that's what I usually go by. So it just kind of makes it easier because there's a lot of Chris's in the world. So um, um, I started role playing oh, about 45 years ago. Yeah, it was the original basic set of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and then it kind of evolved into the advanced Dun Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, really quickly. So, I mean, it was a really quick jump. Um, and that kind of led me, I, I saw some friends that I played with and they read books and I'm like, wow, I haven't read books since I was reading like school stuff, not particularly anything that was science fiction or fantasy. But um, a, a friend of mine introduced me to Roger Zelazny, who's uh, a Nebula and a Hugo Award winner extraordinaire. Um, He's since passed, but he wrote books like Nine Princes in Amber, um, uh, This Immortal, Damnation Alley. I mean, the list goes on and on, but truly easy reading because um, at nine years old, I was capturing all of it. Um, well, most of it, very Machiavellian, but I was capturing most of it. Um, and it just kind of led me down a rabbit hole and I just started becoming an avid reader of fantasy books. Uh, and that's where I am today. And I've been involved in this con um, unofficially for a few years now. Um, I think it's going on four years. Uh, but this year I was asked to be on the, the um, con com and also be a presenter and a co-host here on Car Con Carolina's television, which I'm amazingly happy to do because uh, I love this platform. And I love reaching out to the community and trying to bring us all together. All right. Yeah. And then um, what what we're doing at Con Carolina's television, I told you earlier that it's about reimagining um, what's going on um, with the con, with the, the, the content that we create and bring to you on um, Con Carolina's television. It's going to be uh, really, really an amazing trip for us. And there's a lot in store. Um, we just want to stay connected to the community while the con's not going on. The con's three days a week, but this community thrives day in and day out. And we want to be part of that, um, that growth and that opportunity. So that's why yeah. we're coming here. Yeah, we want to use, we want to start utilizing social media more to, to stay connected with not only the the Carolina region, uh, the Charlotte, Carolina, South Carolina region that we're home to, but we really want to try and branch out to to the 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 geek culture that is worldwide. You know, we want to use social media. We want to use you know 
we want to make we we just want to build bring the whole world together and and just you know just become one with all the people that are like us and you know geekdom can can heal the world in some cases and we kind of need a little bit of togetherness so yeah. you know, we're going to really hit social media and you know we've got a great bunch of authors we work with and, and musicians and game designers and really just can't wait to help bring them all and, and we got a lot of yeah. local celebrities that we would love to introduce you to and stuff so we really just want to bring sure. everybody and we will together. introduce you to them so that's part of this platform and the, another thing i wanted to say is that um you know she's talking about bringing everyone together like you know nerds unite you know that kind of thing uh, and the way we're going to be able to do that, we're not expecting everyone to say, hey, let's go into Charlotte for, you know, you know, in June, early June and, and check out this convention. But we're going to offer virtual, you know, programming that is going to be so like dynamic and um, just really an amazing thing for us to put forward, especially in days like today where, I mean, the pandemic has really just messed up everybody's kind of schedule and lives and everybody's still in kind of a funk and a, like, where are we going to go from here? And, um, and that's just a little thing that you can do to escape for a few days. And mm -hmm. I love that about um, conventions in general. And uh, this, you know, this community of, uh, of geeks, I mean, it's just something that we can escape with. Yeah. All right. And what types of programming are we going to um, bring you? Well, first of all, um, you know, Con Carolinas is the longest running multi-fandom con in the Carolinas. And they they have brought you a high quality Con Carolinas television um, in the past. And we're going to continue to do that. But we're going to step it up a notch with the production team we have and all the amazing players that we have behind the scenes creating content and um, everything like that. We're just going to uh, really um, give this... Um, the opportunity it deserves so that we can capture as many of you as possible into our net. <laughs> if you, if you were to actually attend con Carolina, which COVID pending will is actually planned for June 3rd through 5th this year, right? you will find track panels um, because it's a nonprofit con. So there's a lot of education behind it. You'll find tracks on writing, filmmaking, uh, cosplay, you'll, you'll find fandom life, um, we have a bunch of we have a good paranormal group, and you'll get to meet so you'll get to meet authors and just all kinds of stuff. So we want to take the core educational and we want to blow it up and bring it bigger. So some of the programming you can expect, you, you're going to see. We also have a big gaming. You'll see game demonstrations. You'll see authors talking about their books and their process. You'll see fans of shows, TV. Um, books will be talking about their passions and their love for the fandoms that they belong to. Uh, we may have artists being able to come on and show us their process and maybe do a live drawing for you and all that kind of stuff that we would have in the con. We want to bring it to you bigger and better and share it with you for those that may not be able to come down to Charlotte. Right. So here's what we have in store for you over the next few episodes. Um, we have um, what we call the Walking Dead talk, and that's going to feature a couple of uh, really interesting um, individuals, uh, Scott and Stacy Cannon, and also Jeff Starnes, who's, um, who all know each other and, and kind of been in the zombie community, but with like the origins and the, 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 the end of the series coming and the last few episodes coming out. Uh, we thought it was prudent for us to address um, the, the Walking Dead. So we're going to do that by talking about it and talking to these fine folks. We're also going to bring you um, Ribbons and Rivets uh, Crafting Party. And that's going to happen at the Comic Mon store here locally, which is owned by um, one of our the, uh, hosts that does a lot of the gaming content with us. Um, he owns a comic book store and a beautiful... Uh, gaming facility that you can go in there and play D and D or board games or what have you. But um, we'll focus more on that in other uh, episodes down the line. But he also is responsible for creating the game. So we're going to do a hunt master, which is the name of his game origin story. And then we're going to talk a little bit about it. 
and then we're going to play through the game. And uh, it's a fun game, family friendly, and a lot of people uh, really enjoy it. I know I enjoy it a lot. I play it a lot. Uh, and then we're going to do um, a, uh, some shows in the future. We'll we'll talk about the Marvel multiverse. What else do we got in store, April? Ah, uh, the Mor Morbius movie. Uh, we want to hit on definitely the Lord of the Rings TV series when that comes out. Um, we'll hit up all the new Marvel movies as they get released. Um, we definitely want to talk about LARPing. Um, and, of course, Chris can't wait to talk about the Batman movie when it comes out. I, I can't wait. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. And uh, anyone that knows me knows that I have my entire living room dedicated to a Batcave. And, and um, anybody I'll knows probably... me knows I'm not a fan of Batman, so... He can have that topic. <laughs> I will probably do an episode on Batman while you're, you know, on vacation or something then. <laughs> but it should be fun for everybody. And mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to have a, a really good time. And I'm looking very forward. You mentioned a couple of things. There's also, I'm looking forward a little bit of redemption for Jared Leto. Um, because he is, um, or was, the Joker in the Suicide Squad. And he didn't get you know, the best of reviews, let's face it. Right. Uh, but I think it was more script than his acting ability. Because if you've seen him in any other performance, like Requiem mm -hmm. for a Dream, any of the other movies he's been in, he's a fabulous actor. And um, I, I have high hopes for Morbius. I really I do. do. I, and, I think um, Morbius is going to be his redemption. Right, right. I, I, I'm hoping so. I'm crossing my fingers. I just wish they I, would stop moving the release date. Right. <laughs> I think they had some fine tuning to do, but that's yeah. that's merely speculation, which is something that, that we're going to do a lot. Um, yeah. We're not going to concentrate on talking about a movie after it's been released. We mm -hmm. want to talk about it before it comes out, um, give you what we think it's going to um, entail, like if it's going to be this way or that way or, or what elements we can expect from this, um, these movies. Um, and then we're going to, we're going to talk about it in that light and not offer spoilers and that kind of stuff. Cause it's unfair. I mean, people need to see this movie mm -hmm. and with the pandemic and everything, not everyone has the opportunity to, to go out there or it's not on every streaming platform. So, you know, we'll give you the opportunity and we'll just talk about it and be like a little bit of what if a little bit of mystery behind it. It's so, a little bit of a, of a recap, what you need to know going into the movie. Right. Just you know, sometimes there's a big gap between when you've seen something. We're like, here's what you need to know going into the movie. And right. we're, we're trying to find, we'll find a nice home on the internet where, for those of you that would like to discuss spoilers, we'll have a nice outlet for that where we can discuss the spoilers with you. Yeah, and, and somebody in the, in the chat had just uh, mentioned the fact that, you know, we're addressing people that might not be in the nerd community at all. You know, future nerds is what they're saying. And that was... Uh, I think Bates Motel Six. Bates Motel Six. That was. I mean, I thought that was an excellent comment that we kind of um, just, you know, brushed by. But for sure, we want we want to embrace and create mm -hmm. those nerds of the future. Even though parents are pretty much doing a really good job at it, and this pandemic is forcing everyone to play games together and, yep. and do fun things. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, I mean, I, I have a lot of faith are, that we're going to have some great content for you. We are also very inclusive of the um, LGBTQ, I apologize, I don't remember the last. QT, thing. yeah. QT. I mean, it's, it's ever evolving. I everybody, I don't. everyone. We're yeah. welcome to everybody. We yeah, love everybody, I, we love you all. That's a good point. Down. I apologize, and we're, I didn't have the letters right. Right, and we're talking to... Um, Companies like the, um, or groups like the um, Charlotte Gamers Network, uh, who deal expressly in, in that type of environment, and they're party planners and they're game providers. So we're going to have them, hopefully, um, in a section of our gaming as a little teaser for you guys. So that's going to ramp up. We're going to have some video games um, for the first time, I, I think, in a long time at this con. So uh, gaming is definitely one of our focal points. That's why we're going to bring you a lot of gaming TV. Um, probably every other episode um, is going to either be multi-fandom and then it's going to be gaming. 
and it can be uh, role playing games, board games, you know, game creation, whatever it is, we're going to kind of bring it to you. So probably going to be a lot of episodes of April losing whatever game we're playing. <laughs> and, right. No, as a matter of fact, I think the last game we played together, you won. So, ha. I believe I did. I just proved you wrong. Unless we don't use that footage and we have to play again. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably the case, but I don't mind because it's a great game. It is a Let's great see. game. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, my wife mentioned the fact that I'm spoiled because we're using my living room as a bat cave. Bat <laughs> and it's true. I mean, it's wall to wall and it's beautiful. Um, all right. So... Going forward, we're going to talk, like today, we're just going to give you a, a, a kind of a little teaser of what we're going to, um, some of the topics that we're going to talk about. So top six, not top five, not top 10, top six fandoms um, because, in your life. Because April. you couldn't get me to narrow it down to five. Yeah, yeah. She had to have six. But I think six is a good number, right? It helps. It's not the typical five. What do you got first on the list? So my number six fandom is the Fallout video game series. I Um, I enjoy the series um, a lot. One, I I do enjoy it because it's a it's a shooter game with a story. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of the the Adam Punk, the 50s style overlay, post apocalyptic. Um, It also for a beginner video game player, it's got a very easy shooting system. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a very good aimer, so I like that. Uh, but I just I love something about the the nuclear war aspect with the modern mixed with that '50s retroy kind of TV dinner, you know, foil TV dinner kind yeah. of feel. So I, I just love the mix of that too. That whole that whole aesthetic that it has. Um, so I just I kind of love everything about it. Yeah, we have yet to play that game. I I play it also. I, I think it's a fun game to play. I haven't played as as uh, recently as uh, April has, but I think it's a great game, and it does have a lot of really cool aesthetics to it. Um, all right, let me give you my number six, and I've already talked about it in my intro. It has to be Roger Zelazny and his uh, library of work because it just inspired me to be the the uh, uber nerd I am today. <laughs> so that's my number six. <laughs> All right, so my number five? Number five. My number five is the Harry Potter's Wizarding World. Um, it used to be a little higher up, but... Um, the Fantastical Beasts kind of knocked me down, knocked it down a little bit. Um, I just, I love the magic. Um, I love just the, the, the way that all the characters are just so, just, I mean, it's just such a big world and it all, you know, just the creativity and all the characters and just how well thought out everything is. But at the same time, I'm kind of, we had a panel at the 2021 convention called art surpasses the artists because we needed to kind of feel our feelings on how, what happens when we love the product so much, but then the artist kind of does something that we're like, yeah, okay. We don't like you anymore. So we have to separate her work from Rawlings comments you know, do we do we have to disregard the entire fandom because we no. don't agree with her, or does the work does her work, her whole entire creation, become bigger than what she is and what she said? So there's that fine balance that we've had to, and that that panel was yeah. quite interesting um, at the con this year. So, but I just enjoy Harry Potter because it's just such a like an immersive world with these just these thought out creatures and. There's so many different elements that all went into it that it's it's just I just like being able to like grab a piece of it and you just like you're completely immersed into something right. new. You know, and it it stands the test of time. I mean, I, yeah. I've gone back and watched the first movie and I was just enchant just as enchanted as I was the first time I saw it. And I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, but I loved 
playing Harry Potter, Le Harry Potter Legos, um, both games that came out. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I do like to revisit, like kind of do a, um, a marathon um, every, yeah. every year or two on yeah. Harry Potter. So I can agree. Yeah. All right. My number five pick is um, role playing in general, but specifically like Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. um, Pathfinder, 40K, any of these games like that are just, um, she gets lost in Harry Potter and I get lost in a world that one of my friends cr is creating. And it's just yeah. <laughs> su such an amazing process. Um, and people, you know, I don't, I know a lot of people that make fun of, of, people that role play but my point is is that if you've never done it don't knock it and if you're doing it try harder because it is a beautiful thing to be part of in my opinion all right what's your number four number four my number four is the disney fandom now i know the disney fandom has many many aspects of it there's the movies, there's the animated, there's the parks, and then there's the fans themselves. I come and go. I, I originally fell in love with Disney because of the animated movies. I always wanted to be an ink and painter. Um, I love the animation. I was all about the animation. And then as I got older, I started meeting friends, making friends in the Disney fan community. It was my first entrance. Uh, the Disney fan community was my first experience as into fandom and fan community. Um, mm -hmm. So I did that for a very long time. It was my first first con uh, conventions were, were Disney conventions and the parks became a big part of my life for a while there. And I made some really good friends. Um, so I really enjoyed it, but I'm, I'm not quite thrilled with the way the parks have been going lately, the direction yeah. they've been taking. I'm not entirely thrilled with the way the company as a whole has been going lately, um, especially with the way they've been treating Pixar movies. But I do still, at the heart, I do love Walt Disney. I love Walt right. Disney World. I love the movies. I love Star Wars. I love Marvel. And I just, I love it all. I love the fans, <laughs> even the ones that don't deserve to be loved right now. But I, I do love everything about Disney. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, I can understand that. They're also on my list, but just not yet. So the um, number four uh, fandom that I have is for a book series called, well, and a, uh, a streaming uh, movie or series uh, called The Wheel of Time uh, by Robert Jordan um, and now uh, Brandon Sanderson that um, is just epic and massive and creative and huge and um it's just i know it's another book series kind of thing but it's where my heart is i love these things you know i won't tell you that i've read 21 books um based on a forgot forgotten realms campaign um you know it's stuff like that uh books just fascinate me and the wheel of time is like huge and uh, Ray says that the Wheel of Time needs a CCTV episode, which um, maybe for season two we'll do because um, that will be in season two and they'll be in season two. So I think it'll it's, give me a chance to catch up. It. It's yeah, on there, my were some there were some interesting points based on the, the Wizarding World from from Bates Motel again, six. Um, that you know magic is beyond anyone eat muggles or wizards or witches or whatever it's mm -hmm. it's 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 the world that is captivating and that's what uh ray goes on to say that um in the harry potter world there's something for everybody um so if you're like me and like you know the the fights the sorcery fights and, and, yeah. and that kind of thing um it's there you know uh, so that's that's huge. And I think it's important to point out that it, it really is got a little bit of something for everyone. So if yeah. you haven't given them a chance, give them a chance. And if you haven't read um, the Wheel of Time series or even watched, even though they took a lot of liberties, because you're mm -hmm. trying to take 14 books mm -hmm. and cram them into eight seasons or projected eight seasons, 
And, and that's hard to do because those books are a thousand pages long. Yeah. So it would be almost impossible for anyone to do without taking some liberties. Right. And some of the liberties that they're taking that have kind of um, got, you know, the purest of um, Robert Jordan's works um, got them kind of a, in a little bit of a like, hey, that's not how it happened. But they're doing stuff to actually bring it into our current climate, which I like. So that's that's my um, fifth offering. What, what offering is this? Uh, uh, it's our fourth offering. Fourth. So that is on my list. Offering. Wheel of Time it, is on my list. It's a good list. We're gonna have to do a show about uh, on my list. <laughs> on my list. <laughs> okay, right. number next. three. Number three. Would be the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I know I might get a little people griping at me for this one. I only like the Marvel fan, the movies and TV shows. I do not like comic books. I appreciate the art and I appreciate the storytelling. I personally don't like comic books because I do not like the format. I don't like reading comic books the way they're written so i don't like graphic novels either i just don't like the little boxes the i just don't like comic books for it's just i never did i i don't know why it's just a weird things i just don't like any comic books in general oh wow um, that's a so, bold statement here on you know cctv i i know i know my boyfriend gives me hell for it all the time i just there's just something about the format that I just I don't get. I don't I whatever's in your heart, man. You have to enjoy that. I, I do look I do love the art and I think the artists are incredibly talented and I appreciate sure. the storytelling. I just can't sit down and read one. It's just weird. Well um, to, I, to, just to point out that like comic books, I mean, have just been a great platform for movies. <laughs> I mean, let's just face it. There's been the, the the biggest box office, you know, grossing movies, you know, kind of come from that world. Yeah. And see, that's the best thing about my significant other. He loves the comic books. He has a great memory. I don't have to read the comic books because he can tell me everything <laughs> I need to know. But then you don't and get I to see the pretty pictures. <laughs> everything. About, he tell me anything about the comic books. What's the backstory? All right, good. I'm good. I don't have to read it. But I love the movies. I love all the TV shows. I love how they're all connected. See, and believe me, if I love the format, I'm pretty sure I would love all the comic books. I My have loved. I'm a huge comic book fan. I have I loved. Fan the movies as a whole. I mean, yeah. they've really done a great job yeah. uh, since Iron Man, really, right? So they really, they really, they've got the, the the chemistry and the formula down. So what I don't like is what I've seen on Disney Plus as of late. Um, really? I don't like all the one shots that they've been doing. Personal preference. I just, um, I just don't think they're, they're captivating. I thought WandaVision was probably the best of the group. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it was very creative and it was a little bit outside the box. Uh, but the rest of them, I, I, I don't know. I just didn't feel that same connection with. WandaVision was my favorite out of all of them. Yeah. I, I can see why. I didn't, I liked Loki. I thought uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier was great. Hawkeye kind of just felt like it should have just been like a Christmas movie. And that one, you know, and that was it. Um, you know, but uh, one division was definitely the best one of them, and I, yeah, I did like creative. Movie. Yeah, one division was creative. Um, so I do. And are there some bad movies in the MCU? Absolutely, some bad characters. Yeah. And are there some movies that are better than others? But as a whole, the universe is just—it's the way it's just so perfectly connected. Um, I really love. Yeah, and it, and it's been quality content. I mean. It's been better than most, you know, yeah. uh, universes. I mean, let's take the DC universe. I'm a huge Batman fan, and I've got a tremendous amount of love. I for didn't him, but... know that. 
I, I can tell you right now that DC movies aren't holding up to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, I think Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League was incredible. Really? It, it should have been released in a two-part, just like, you know, the, the whole Thanos thing with the MCU. Oh. And if it was done that way, it would have been accepted a lot, huh. a lot better. Um, so if you haven't seen it, I oh, highly I've recommend it. it. Yeah, you just take five hours out of your day and watch yeah. it again. I mean, I've seen it like eight times. So I will never get those five hours back. It was so dull. <laughs> you, okay. I mean, I that's what this versions. is about. Like, that's why it's in my top and not in your top yeah, kind of thing. I've so. seen both versions, and I don't think the sex Steiner version needed to be there. But uh. again... I appreciated yeah, it yeah, for what Marvel. it was. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. All right. That's so we next, so well together. That's right. There's if there's not a little bit of this, then then what yeah. do you have, right? What's up? So, what if we like the same things? Right. So surprise, surprise. Next on my list, which is number three for me, um, would be another book. Surprise, surprise. Series of books. Um, it's the Sword of Truth series, and Terry Goodkind is the author, and um, I just loved it. I just loved the relationship in it. Um, I loved the the whole growth and character development in it. Uh, I looked a little bit past uh, the political undertones that it might have, but I really can appreciate the love story behind it and the passion that these people had for one another. And there's a little bit of a dark twist to to most of the books. So, um, and I kind of find that really intriguing, but if you haven't read the sort of truth, um, I highly recommend it. I, I picked up the book while I was in the Chicago airport stuck in the snow and, uh, I read it cover to cover in the time that it took me to board my plane. And I was just hooked lock, stock, barrel. And I, it, it became part of my world. Now don't go and watch unless you want like, a campy Hercules Xena type of vibe, very Sam Raimi. Don't go watch the Legend of the Seeker, which is loosely based on the Sword of Truth series. Bray in um, the chat saying the same thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So don't don't go by that, but instead read the books, and then you know every night when you go to bed, just say please make this and do a television series a la Game of Thrones or Wheel of Time or any of those, because it would truly be brilliant. Um, all right. So your number two is? Well, Starnes82 is agreeing that Batman has the best, uh, DC has the best animated movies. And I, oh, yeah. I might have to agree with him on that. I, I, I think they have the best TV shows also. I think that Titans and Doom Patrol, Doom Patrol. and, and Doom Patrol. Gotham and all of the other DC inspired shows are amazing. Yeah. I don't find the same amazement in the Marvel universe. I, I do love Doom Patrol. Yeah. And I, I do love that. Okay. So we're up to number, number two. 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 My number two fandom is while it is based around a show, it is actually not about the show. It is supernatural. But it's not so much supernatural as much as it is. is Misha Collins and the Gish Random Acts charity aspect of what came from it. When I moved down here in 2017, I decided I wanted to take part in Gish because it wasn't really a big thing up in New England where I'm from. So I joined a local Gish team. And I happened to meet three women who just happened to live in the same areas down here in Charlotte. And those three women are now my best friends. And it was all because of Gish. We have Gish together ever since. We do a lot of stuff together. Um, one of the friends got me really hooked into gaming, which is how I got into gaming and have since met Chris and, and Con Carolina. And just Gish itself, and, and I'd like to do a CCTV episode on this. It's so yeah, creative and rewarding. And there's so much charity and giving in in harmony and I, I just I try to get everybody that I can that that loves to be creative and, and loves charity to just to do it with me. I keep trying to build my I, I captain a team 
Um, this year will be my fourth year captaining that team and, and just the charity and all the work that Misha Collins puts into it and, and just, and all the, it's just, it's charity. It's all charity. And it's just, we raise money and we just try to do good in the world, which is, it kind of ties back into one of the things that I, I like to do, you know, with, with Con Carolina over the next couple of years is just try to do good in the world. Um, and it's just, I, like I said, these women are my best friends and, you know, they've got that and I've gotten them hooked onto Con Carolina. We do gaming together. And it's just, it's just, I, without Supernatural introducing me to Misha Collins, I would have never met my best friends. I would have never gotten hooked into gaming. It, it's just, so I have to keep it on there because it's a great show. I love Jared and Jensen and I love Misha, but it's much more than just the show. It's the everything so, that the show brought me. That's why it's up there on my list. It, Misha is uh, Castiel? Yes. Okay. Now I'm with you now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought it was a great show. I mean, I couldn't really get past like season eight or nine, but um, yeah, I thought it was a great show. I'm looking forward to doing an episode on the Gish thing. Yeah, I think it'll be uh, it'll be a, an amazing thing to do to give back, which is what we're all about a lot of the times. So. Yeah. All right, so my number two. Now I have it split between Disney and Star Wars because you know they're, you know. They're owned. Star Wars is owned now by Disney. But I'm going to separate the two because it's like a part A and part B. I mean, I grew up with Star Wars. I I mean, I, I hope this is not incriminating my dead mother, but she used to get pirated VHS tapes. And early on, we have um, had like probably nine months before it came out, we had Star Wars. And I watched it until it was all stretched out and barely playable. And uh, I just loved that universe from, you know, and that galaxy far, far away from, from that day forward. And I, 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 I got to the point where I had watched it like a few hundred times, not joking. And I could literally say the words as they were happening. And I was annoying a lot of people, especially my my parents. But <laughs> back then, that's what we did. We were kids, and we annoyed our parents because yeah. we didn't have tablets to keep us busy and whatnot. But then the Disney side of it kind of block. I always hated the movies like Snow White, Cinderella, um, mm -hmm. Sleeping Beauty, and those kind of the the original classic Disney, you know, feature films. It wasn't until I had kids of my own. And started mm -hmm. watching like Aladdin and then the newer generation. Like for you, I think we talked about this before. It started with The Little Mermaid, right? Yeah. Uh, but for me, it was Aladdin. And I was yeah. just, I, I loved it. And I've loved everything they put out really much, uh, pretty much since. Yeah. Uh, my daughter was just, just came to visit for the new year. And all we did really is, you know, celebrate the new year and watch Encanto. So uh, pretty, Good pretty movie. endless life that, that I leave with kids. She just turned 20 years old or she is turning yeah. 20 years old in two days. How she can still be so Disney-fied, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they make those movies so relatable mm -hmm. um, to any generation. You know, so I love that fact about Disney. Yeah. But Star Wars will always be my first, like, real cinematic love. Yeah. You know, and my, and I, my, I give credit to my mom because she tried to get me into horror early, early, early. Yeah. And she took me to go see Jaws at a drive-in. And okay. I, I pretty much buried myself in my sleeping bag in my pillow. And I, I didn't want to have anything to do with Jaws back then. From the opening <laughs> scene, it scared the, the, the living crap out of me. So I just stayed away from it. So Disney slash Star Wars... Um, that was for me. I I am a huge fan of Star Wars. Um, Cause again, growing up in the eighties, I um, see Yoda, I, or I did see Yoda back. Star there. Wars came out. I think it came out the year I was born or the year after I was born. And my brother got all the cool Star Wars toys, so I kept stealing them. Cause back then it was still girls and boys toys. Um, so we had all the cool toys growing up, but though they were his. 
Except for Han Solo. My mom bought me a Han Solo figure because I kept stealing his. I thought he was cute. Because <laughs> he was the cutest one, right? Yes, I get you on the Star Wars thing. Cool. We had all the cool toys. All so, right. number one. Drum roll, please. Doctor Who. I am a Whovian. Tried and true. Um, I've had a lot of friends that were into Doctor Who that kept talking about the series. Um, I have a friend that's a, a huge Whovian fan. Her name is Rachel. She lives up in, in Indiana. And uh, she just she's just amazing. She just talked about Dr. Who for so long. And I was like, okay, I trust this girl. I need to go watch this. Right. And I started watching it the night doctor and I've been hooked ever since. And I, I have to thank her between her and some other friends. They just, I wasn't sure the first couple episodes with Christopher Eccleston, I wasn't sure, but they're just like, just wait, tenants coming, tenants coming and spin nonstop. It's just doctor who ever since. Let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. um, did you ever go back and watch Classic Who? I've, I've gone back and watched. I start going back and watching them. Yeah, I have watched them. Oh, cool, cool. Because yeah, my favorite also... classic actor is Sylvester McCoy. Oh, wow. Which is weird because a lot of people don't really seem to think he's one of their favorites. But right, I right. love Sylvester McCoy. You know, I started, I, I tried to start watching Doctor Who the same time you did. Uh, it was, I think, season nine, right? Um, and... Yeah. I just couldn't get into it. I mean, I, I have a lot of friends that love the show and really kind of look down at, down their nose at me because I don't particularly care for the show. But, um, you know, I think there's merit to any show. Like, I, I love the guy that who was the doctor who played in Suicide Squad as um, a uh, thinker. Peter yeah, he was awesome, you know. And then I, I've seen Tenet in a movie before. Um, but I, I can't remember what it was, but, uh, I think you might've mentioned it earlier, but, uh, they're, they're all really gifted. Uh, yeah. I, I did like Rose from that, that episode or that season yeah. nine or whatever. She was, she was great, but yeah. you even have a bunch of Dr. Who stuff, right? Like I do. I do. You can't see it from where I'm sitting, but yeah, I've got yeah. a whole Dr. Who bunch of stuff everywhere. You know, so we buy what we love. Lovely set of books for Christmas. Who's that? I don't know. I, th I think it might have been you. Yay. Yeah, I uh, do. I've, I've actually met a couple of the cast members, too. I've met the Sixth Doctor, Colin Baker. Um, I've met uh, River Colin Song, Baker. Arthur Darville, and uh, the voice of the Dallas Nicholas Bridge, Alex Kingston, and uh, uh, Arthur Darville, yeah, Rory Williams, so. Oh, that's right. Yeah. David David Tennant was in Harry Potter. Thank yes. you. Um, is that Beastie Blonde? Huh? Beatles Blonde. Beatles Blonde. Thank you. Yeah, that's Rachel. She's the one that actually got me hooked on Doctor Who. That writing is really small, so yeah. forgive me if I butcher your name. That's actually Rachel. She runs a Not podcast. Not Rachel. In, uh... You're Rachel. <laughs> that's my Rachel. Yeah. All right. She runs a podcast nice up you, in Indiana and got me hooked on Doctor Who. She's met a lot of doctors. I'm very jealous. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let me get quickly to my number one. Can anyone venture a guess? Um, yes, it happens know. to be Batman. Now, I'm not particularly fond of the campy. I love campy. Believe me, I loved watching Hercules. Uh, I love Sam Raimi, um, you know, Evil Dead type stuff. But, I mean, I do love camp, but I don't like camp in Batman. So if you take just Adam West and Burt Ward and you separate them from the Batman universe um, and keep all the villains that were in the, uh, that TV show, I would have loved it. But um, I don't know. It's just something that had never resonated, even when I was a kid, even though I have this this huge fascination for Batman. I did not watch that television show. Um, like religiously, I would switch on. I don't even remember what channel it was on some public broadcasting channel, PBS. <laughs> Go ahead. And it was uh, a, a show called the electric company and they had Spider-Man little vignettes in their show. So <laughs> I, I would rather watch Spider-Man because it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't silly. And 
Um, Batman, I take very seriously. I love, you know, Frank Miller's Batman, dark, older, just, Mm -hmm. you know, grittier. That's the kind of Batman I love. But I collect everything because I have an amazing group of friends that just, that's all they buy me. I don't, they don't even need to ask me what I want for my birthday or Christmas. (laughs) They just buy me bat stuff and I'm, I'm fine. And I will forever love the bat. Yeah. That's that, that rounds out our, our top six. Our top six. fandoms. That's pretty awesome. That is. Uh, We, we do have a few minutes left. So if you want to real quickly go through our top five TV shows, yeah. Why don't you just take your top five and then I'll take my top five and we'll see if anyone out there uh, agrees. Okay. My top t- top five TV shows and a couple of them are yeah. pretty mainstream and not very geeky. So top five TV okay. shows. Gilmore Girls from Connecticut. Gotta love the Gilmore Girls. Grey's Anatomy. I love medical shows. Lucifer and then Supernatural and Doctor Who. Can't go wrong with those. Right. Who can really argue? You know, my my wife has made me watch the first season of Grey's Anatomy. And um, it's not horrible. (laughs) I thought it was going to be horrible. I mean, I literally was going to just twitch all night long. And she's like, take your earphones out and give it a shot. And I've been kind of hooked. Don't tell her. You do know there's 19 seasons, right? Yeah. And it just got renewed. So yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Go figure. Uh, yeah. We, we did a little talk about the longest, one of the longest running shows and that was on the list. It wasn't the Simpsons with 33 seasons or whatever, but it was up there. Right. So, all right. My top five real quick is uh, our, our uh, Gotham for obvious reasons, but no Batman really in it. There's a, a young um, Bruce, but there's not really like that. Like you get little, just little tastes of what villains are going to be. But the villains that are in that show, Gotham, um, are amazing. I mean, truly, mm-hmm. really, really well written show. Uh, Smallville, um, that kind of just came out of nowhere for me. I'm not a huge Superman fan. Although I'm a huge um, Henry Cavill fan. I mean, I just don't think that Superman is, is for me. He's awesome. I mean, he's a beautiful man. I don't right. get it. Yeah. You don't? Okay. I don't get it. Well, that, that just leaves more, more Harry for the rest you. of us. Uh, or Henry for the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> my next show is Firefly. Uh, Josh Whedon's little short. Yep. One season. One of my favorites. Um, Want to just kind of pick that whole cast and crew up and, and just kind of choke them and say we wanted more. And yeah. to tell you the truth, Serenity was not satisfying enough no. for true Firefly fans. I, I love it. I'll watch it. But yeah. Um, next thing I like, I mean, even though I like Sherlock Holmes, like as a general rule, like from Basil to... Benedict. Um, I'm going to go with Sherlock um, because I think uh, it was brilliant. It was just well written. Yeah. Uh, And there's a lot of English shows like that. I mean, Luther Mm -hmm. was like that, well written, um, kind of launching pads. And even though these these guys like Idris Elba and um, Benedict were huge stars already, um, they were still taking it back and going back to what made them famous. Yeah. And that was the BBC and, and, and the dramas that they played on there. And then my number one show, which is not nerd geek or whatever, even though it's a, a, a period piece is uh, Peaky Blinders. Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing show, amazing cast, amazing, amazingly written. It was um, by far one of the best shows I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. And that's saying a lot because mm-hmm. I watch a lot of shows. A so lot do of I. Sherlock was my is one of my favorites, and I think a lot of it has to do with Stephen Moffat. He writes Sherlock with um, Mark Gaddis. Stephen yeah, Moffat yeah. also writes or also wrote my favorite seasons of Doctor Who, which was the Matt Smith era with the Matt Smith Amy Pond River song. Right. So right. I, I think that's one of the reasons I that Sherlock I, I just love Stephen Moffin's storytelling. 
So I think that's All one right. of the reasons that Sherlock is so so good to me. Plus, I like Martin um, Martin Freeman. Yeah, yeah. So do I. Um, yeah, he was a great um, Bilbo. So Bilbo. <laughs> even though you know movies weren't amazing, but they were right. Really good. Um, all right, so that kind of gives you a taste of what we're going to offer <laughs> yep. going forward. We'll have guests, we'll have, you know, um, co-hosts that'll come in, uh, and just a lot of really great content for you guys, and hopefully it will keep you engaged and um, coming back. Yep. So, oh yeah, next, um, I just while, while we're here, Next week, we're not going to air at 7 o'clock. We're going to go to 8 o'clock Eastern time. Which is our uh, new time. It's, it's, it's to uh, accommodate some um, scheduling conflicts. So just know that we're going to be here, but we're going to be here an hour later. Yep. And, um, yeah, we think. If, uh, if you want any more information about anything, the con, Con Carolinas with an S, um, go to Con Carolinas. Dot or, org. Org because we're an organization and the convention itself if you're in the charlotte area is june 3rd through 5th and tickets should be available on the website they are you can uh, get them right now you can get your passes all right and next um, week's show just so that you guys know will be the walking dead show that we talked about yes. before and we'll get yes. into it with um all of our lovely guests but yes. until next time i'm bronner i'm a baker and uh, we will see you next time on Bye. Cotton Carolina's television. See you guys.